All right, and then I'm gonna go to my screen so we can start our notes. All right, so we're gonna continue into this uh, 9.4 logarithmic functions. All right, let me put these people in real quick. Caleb and Jessica. All righty, so first thing we're going to do is um, play with the graphing on our calculators. So if y'all want to get y'all's calculators, um, first thing we'll do is we're going to graph a logarithmic function. So we're going to graph the equation y equals log base seven of x. Okay, so let me bring out my calculator. So I'm gonna turn it on and go to y equals, and then let me clear everything else I got in here. So I'm gonna show you two ways to do this because some of y'all got log base on your calculator and some don't. So to get to the log base, I'm gonna hit math, and then I'm gonna arrow down until I can find log base on it. So that's the first thing I need to punch is log base. So I'm gonna hit math, arrow down to the log base, hit enter, and then that'll bring it up just like I need it. So where the base is, I'm gonna put my seven where it's blinking, and then I'm gonna arrow over with the cursor and put in my x. So now it looks just like my equation they gave me, so I'm just gonna hit graph. And you notice these graphs, they sort of hug this y-axis and then they come up and they slowly rise. Because remember, these logarithms are finding exponents and that's why it's a little flatter going across there. And it's crossing at the one zero on the x-axis because remember for this to equal um one that exponent has to be a zero for that to equal one and that's why it's crossing right there so the exponentials crossed at zero one on the y-axis the logarithmics cross at one zero on the x-axis always so y'all that are on here does anybody not have that log base function on your calculator? Um, I, I don't. Okay, so if you don't have the log base. Hold on, in class. <laughs> um, if you don't have the log base, let me show you what else you would have to do to that then. So if you don't have the log base, we're gonna do what we call change of base method. So, to change a base, you would put in y1 equals. So change a base, you take the log of the x, so we'll put log x, and we divide that by log of the seven. So this is how you would get around if you don't have that log base on there. So let me clear this out. Now, when you do this method, you gotta close the parentheses each time you put in something. So I would do my log, push my X, and then divide that by my log of seven. And you see that log button's right on the front of your calculator here, okay? So now, I got my log X divided by log seven. It's just hard to see that first part. Let me arrow over. So we're gonna hit graph on that. And notice it'll give you the same graph coming up at Y axis, it crosses at one and then it just slowly growing. So it's a little bit more work, but that's the way you would get around that, okay? 
All right, so this one we're gonna do f of x equals log of x. Now think about this log. Since it don't have a number right here, it is automatically a 10. But y'all, the front of the calculator, so let me clear this. The front of the calculator right by the seven has the log on it. And that log on the front of that calculator is automatically a log base 10. So everybody should have that button. So we'll go to Y equals, clear this out. And then what was my equation? Log X. So I just hit my log button, my X, and then I'm just gonna close my parentheses and hit enter. Now you're gonna notice it's gonna be really similar to the last graph. It's gonna come up that Y axis it's going to cross at one on the x-axis and then it slowly grows. Okay. All right, so the third one we'll look at is the natural log graph. This is a ln of x. So a ln is another special log and it's a log base e. And there's that little number we estimated out what about four decimal places the other day and what's nice y'all everybody has the ln button right here on the calculator by the four so on this one i'll go to y equals clear out that equation hit my ln and it'll pop up just like the log did so we put in our x and then close my parentheses and y'all this is going to be really really similar when you graph it, it's gonna come up that y-axis, crosses over at the one on the x-axis, and then grows as it goes to the right. Okay, so the main thing, we just wanted you to be able to graph them on your calculator. So Jessica, on yours, really the only ones you gotta worry about doing this change of base to is if it has a base down in that other than the 10. All right, so now we're just going to find the logarithms. And I sort of showed y'all some of these the other day. So we're going to find log base 5 of 625. So what this problem is really looking for is an exponent that the 5 was raised to to make 625. So I got five, the sum exponent is gonna equal 625. So if you want to, you can sort of figure out, hey, can I rewrite the 625 using the five? With an exponent, and that'd be true, right? So let's see what the exponent would be. Five times five is 25. 25 times five is 125. 125 times five is 625. So I did that four times. That would be five to the fourth, which means now the exponent has to equal four. Now remember, if you don't like figuring this out, go in your calculator. That's what the log base is for. So I would go to math, arrow down to the log base. hit enter, and then I would put my five in, which is blinking at, arrow over, and put in 625. So now the calculator is gonna find me the exponent that five was raised to, to turn it into a 625, and that was a four. Jessica, on yours, since you don't have the log base, you would do the log of 625 divided by the log of five. It's always the upper one divided by the log of the bottom one. Now you gotta close parentheses each time, so you would do your log 625, close parentheses, and then divide that by the log of five. And notice when you hit enter, you still get a four out of that.
All right, y'all, how about a log? Okay, so pretty much the big number is always going to be at the top, right, when you're dividing? Right. Mm -hmm. It's always how it sort of looks okay. to me. Since this one's up to me, it's on top, and then this one's sort of lower, always put that on the bottom. Okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So log base 6 to 36. So really, how many times are you going to multiply 6 times itself to equal 36? Six. Right, so that can make that, uh, I can rewrite 36 as 6. Let's see, 6 times 6 is already what, 36? So 2 times, which means that the mm -hmm. exponent 6 gets raised to to make that a 36 is definitely a 2. Um, but y'all could have punched that right in there on the log base or done that change of base to that. All righty, so this one is going to throw a decimal at us. Log base 10 of 0 0.001. So I'm going to show you how to write this 0 0.001 as a exponent. I don't know if you remember scientific notation, but when you start a decimal on the right and move it left, it makes the exponents negative. And if you were moving the decimal to the right, like going from 10 to 100 to 1,000, you would make the exponents positive. So what I'm doing is I'm going to start on the right side of the one and move left. One, two. So since they move three units to the left, that's going to make that exponent a negative three. So we have log base 10 of 10 to the negative third. So you are about to see a little property that when this base matches the number that has an exponent by it, my final answer is going to be that exponent. So y'all let me show you. I would go to what log base and then Jessica, I'll do this your way also. So go to log base, put in our 10, and then arrow over, and let's put in 10 to the negative third. So 10, I use that little carrot right there for my exponents, and then I'm gonna put in my negative three. So now it looks like my problem. Hit enter, I get negative three. So the answer is always the exponent when you rewrite it. Then y'all check this out. Since that's a base 10, I could have said log, 0 0.001 and got my answer of a negative three. I could have went old school like Jessica and did a log 10 to the negative three and then divided that by what the log of the 10 and I still would have got a negative three. So many ways you can get these on here, okay? All right, y'all, log base 4 of 1 over 16. So by hand, I'm going to rewrite the 1 16th as 4 to an exponent. So first of all, 16 would be 4 squared, right, 4 times 4. Now, I don't want the four to be under a one, so I'm gonna move the four up. But y'all remember, if you move a number from bottom to top or top to bottom, you gotta change the exponent from a positive to a negative. Which means this now gives me log base four of four to the negative two. So y'all look, I got it going on again. I got this base matching this number, which means the answer has to be that exponent. So watch this, I would use log base four on that. And so math, let me bring this over, go down to log base, enter. So my base was a four, 
And then I got a penny and a 1 16th. So I'm going to use 1 divided by 16 and enter. Now, here's something else on that. Some of y'all, when you hit log, um, it's going to bring out the parentheses. But let me see what else I want to do. Okay, so Jessica would be what a one over 16. Got to close the parentheses and then divide that by log of the four. So let's see, log of one divided by 16, close parentheses, divided by log of the four. And that should still give me my negative two. All right, so the other button on there, LN. LN is on the front of the calculator by the four. So punch that LN. To get the E without the exponents, use the little blue E above that division symbol. So to get it, hit second, divide. And then I'm gonna close my parentheses. So now it looks just like they got. So y'all, I get a one out of that. That's because, remember, LN is really a log base E of E. And any time this base matches that result, it's going to equal 1 every time. So if that was a base 5 to 5, the only exponent I can raise 5 to to make a 5 would be a 1. Hell, y'all can do that with hearts, right? Log base heart of a heart equals one. So y'all remember that if they match the base with the result, you're going to get a one out of that, okay? So what's this? Log of 10. Remember, I don't have a base showing, so it's automatically a 10. So this is really a log base 10 of 10 which means that base is matching that result. So this answer will be one. And y'all, I can just punch the log for that. Log, throw in 10, hit an enter, and I get my one. Log base four of four to the third. All right, so remember, we've done a few more go, but remember, this base is now matching that result. So my answer has to be that exponent. All right, so Jessica would do a log of four to the third divided by log of a four. And then if you had log base, you would just hit math and go to your log base. Uh, put in a four, and then that is four to the third power. There you are, and we should get what, a three on that, okay? All right, log sixth root of five. So let me refresh you on radicals. To rewrite a radical as an exponent, you bring out the base, which is the A, and then you're going to make a fractional exponent. The top of that exponent will be the exponent, which is an M. If there's no number here where the M is, I will make that a 1. The bottom number is the root of the radical, which is the N. So knowing that, I can rewrite this as a log. My base is the five, my fractional exponent, since there's not a number by the five is a one, and then the root would be the six. Oh, y'all, that's a log, I forgot my five here, put my five for my base. So make sure y'all put a five for your base on those. So now I got a log base five, the five to the one six, so since this base is matching that result, my answer would be the exponent of 
one six. Now, we can put that in like it looks, so there's gonna be two ways depending on your calculator. So let me do it the first way. I gotta do the log base five, so I'm gonna use my log base, go down and find that, hit enter. So my base is a five. Now I'm gonna put in that radical. So if your calculator is new enough, when you hit math, Go down to number five. It's got a little X in front of that radical and hit enter. And look what it brought on my screen. It brought me the radical. So I can put in my six where it's blinking, arrow right and get under radical and put my five. So now I got a log base five of the sixth root of five. When I hit enter, it's gonna give me a decimal, but remember I can hit math and enter twice and I get one sixth. Alrighty, if your calculator is older for this problem, we would hit, that we're gonna do the change of base where I take the log of the six root of five and I'm gonna divide that by the log of the five. And remember, I gotta put these in parentheses. So the old calculator, I would hit log. For y'all to do, the sixth root, you got to hit the six first, then hit math, and then go grab that radical with the X in front of it and hit enter. So when I do that, it pops the six in front of the radical like I need. Okay, then under the radical was a. Hold on. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Can you go back? Say again. How did you get that six? I'm sorry. Okay, so let me start mine over. How did you get that six? Uh -huh, so I hit log. Sorry. Now I hit the six first and then go to math and get that radical with the X in front of it and hit enter. Okay. Now, if your calculator is really older, it might not draw that radical. It'll just draw parentheses. So when you hit that, is it bringing up a radical at all? Like my screen there? Yeah. Okay, so you're good then. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's put a five in there. Now watch this, you got to arrow out and then arrow over to get that second parenthesis in. And then we'll divide that by, what was it? Log of the five. And then let's see, we're going to hit enter. Now remember, it's going to give me a decimal again. So I'm going to hit math and enter twice and get my one six. So it's a little more tedious, but it gives me the same results. All right. I didn't get that. I don't know what the, I don't know what I did. Uh -huh. So so let's put this in. Okay, we got log. So follow me. Log. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna do that six root, so I'm gonna hit my six math and go get the radical with the x and pull it up and then we're going to put our five in and arrow out of that and close those parentheses okay then i'm going to hit my divide arrow out that means i'm just leaving the arrow right arrow right with that arrow up there and get out from under that radical because if everything is under the radical it's going to do the sixth root of five log something something it's going to put it all under there so you want your screen pretty much yeah see mine my stick when i push the six on mine too when i push the six on mine too it don't it, the uh it doesn't go up to the top of the radical okay mine. so so some of y'all's old school radicals, here's what it's gonna look like. Six, you're gonna hit six, and then it's just gonna show a radical like that with a parenthesis. Okay. So you put the five yep. parenthesis, and then arrow out of that and put another parenthesis. So if you're really gotcha. old, you gotta close oh. those parentheses and then divide by log of the five. Oh, gotcha. Because what's happening when it gives, gives y'all a radical, it, it's doing the old school, so everything that's under the radical has to actually be in parentheses on those ones. 
so that now when you do it, you should get pretty much what I'm getting, that decimal. And then you turn that decimal into that one six. Oh, we got some old 83s in here today, don't we? And the old 84s, I guess. <laughs> you know what's sad? If we'd been on campus, I could wire my calculator up to all y'all's calculators. And if you didn't have the log base, my calculator would upgrade your operating system so that everybody would have that. All righty, let's see. How about a log? That would have been better. <laughs> mm -hmm. So log base 81 of a three. So anytime this result is smaller than that base, you're going to get fractional exponents. So let's see. So Jessica, log three divided by log 81. All right, so let me go to my log base, hit enter. Uh, my base was the 81, and then my result was the three. So remember, this is going to give me a decimal, 0.25, but I know 0.25 is going to give me one fourth. So that means to turn an 81 into a three, you got to take roots of it, okay? All right, what's next? How about log 12 to the first? So what exponent would you raise a 12 to to turn it into a one? Oh, that would always be what, a eh? Zero. So no matter what the base is, if that result is a one, that exponent will be a zero. All right, LN seventh root of E. So if it's a one, it'll automatically be a zero? It'll automatically be a zero. Because remember, 12 to the zero okay. power is one. So we can check that. 12 exponent zero. I get a one. Any number you place a zero after is going to give you a one. Okay. All right, let's see. We all got the LN key. So we're going to hit LN. Now to get that seventh root, I'm gonna hit seven and then math and go get my radical with this X in front of it, hit enter. And then underneath I'm gonna put E. So since the E don't have an exponent, I'm gonna use the one by the division and do second divide, pull up my E and then I can arrow it out and close it. So if I hit enter, I don't want the decimal, so I'm going to hit math and enter one more time and get a one-seventh, which would have been the exponent you would have got had you rewritten that. So Jessica would be LN. It'll give you parentheses, seven. Then you're going to get the X and the radical. Remember, it's going to give you a parenthesis. So put your E in parentheses, close those for the radical, and then close the main parentheses. And then that should get yours where you hit enter and be done. All right, so now we're going to convert from exponential to logarithmic. So we're going to use that little property when we got a log base B of X equals Y if and only if, so that means if and only if B to the Y equals X. So they're going to give me exponential I'm going to write from exponential into the log form. Then later they'll give me the log form and I'll rewrite them as exponential. So these started at around 17. So we had 10 squared equals 100. So to rewrite it, we're going to write log 
we want to find our base. Well, our base is the number getting hit with the exponent, which is a 10. So this will be a log base 10. The result was the 100. So that's going to follow right after the log base 10. And then the exponent is the 2. So remember, that is always your exponent. That is always your base. And this is always the result. So we'll rewrite it and you're done. So these aren't too bad. This is getting us ready to solve equations when we hit 9.6. All right, 8 to the 1 third equals 2. So remember, I got to write my log. My base is going to be the 8. My result is going to be the 2. And that's going to equal my exponent of a one third. All right, let me see. I can put 19 right here. Oh, let me see. I got e to the negative fifth equals k. So let's see. I'm going to write my log. My base is the e. My result is the k. And log base e of k is going to equal the exponent of negative 5. So I'm going to tell you, <clears throat> we can write this one different since we got a log base e. Remember, log base e could be replaced with the ln. So that this could become an ln of k equals negative 5. But that math lab, once you change it, I'll just probably enter that answer and be done. It don't require y'all to change them over. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, wow. P to the W equals 34. Now, I will say this. I've been getting issues out of when people put this LN into the math lab. It's not a capital I. It's a small L. So when you punch in the LN on MATLAB for your answers, it'll make it bold and dark, letting you know you got it in right, and then put in your answers, okay? Um, capital I-N, it won't bold that, and when you hit enter, it'll mark them wrong. So you gotta use a little L and an N for those. All right, let's see what we got here. We got our log. My base is the P. My result, is the 34, and that's going to equal the exponent of a W. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is go from these logarithmic and convert them into the exponential. I'm sorry, can you explain how um, the 34 is on the result end again? Okay, because remember, you got some number. We don't know P. It's raised to some exponent W. And that result of that was the 34. So when you rewrite it, the base is always going to be what number was hit with the exponent. That result is always going to be the answer you get from the base being raised to that exponent. And then this side here, remember, because the log is finding an exponent. So that's why the W exponent is always the answer when you write it in log form. Okay. So see, say you had some number five. You didn't know what the exponent was, but you knew that when you took that five, you got a 125 out of that. So if I wrote it as log form, I've had log. My base would be five. My result would be the 125. So now this log right here will find me that exponent. And that would be what? Uh, okay. Three for that, and I think, right? Five times five times five would be 125. So you just got to realize you're really dealing with exponents instead of like your normal variables, okay? 
Alrighty, so now we're going from logarithmic to exponential. Right, and these start at about number 21 here. So I got log base five of 625 equals four. And the only thing we got to remember when they're giving you numbers like this, when I rewrite it, it's still got to be a true statement. So the first thing I need to find is my base, which is that five. The exponent is the four. And we know that five to the fourth power equals the result of 625. Oh, they're not too bad. You just gotta get used to this base always being the number getting hit with the exponent, which is the answer you get on the log form. All right, log 0 0.001 equals negative 3. And we know that's true because while ago when we did the negative, uh, when I moved the decimals, you've seen how I got the negative exponent. So, oh, they're not giving me a base. So any ideas on the base? Okay. There you go. So nothing there. We got to put a 10 down. Now we do have the exponent, which is negative three, and that's going to equal that result of a 0 0.001. So they might hit you with that, or they might even hit you with this ln. How about a ln? 67 equals 4.2047. So it's always going to be 10 if it doesn't give you a base? If it doesn't give you a base when it's a log form, okay? A log form, okay. Now, what's the base of the LN? Remember, I gave that to y'all while ago also. The natural log, which is what this is actually called, LN natural log. Remember, it has a base E. So if y'all are in business, business calculus and stuff, I'm sure you'll get to play with these E's a whole lot. And y'all will see when we do the very last chapter 9.7, there's a few formulas that we use for growth rate and decay rate, and they use that E in them, okay? All right, so knowing that the LN is the base E, I got E to the exponent of 4.2047 is going to equal that result of 67. Now you can actually punch that in and you'll get close to 67, but what they're doing is they're rounding this off because if your numbers aren't perfect roots of those, then you get decimal, non-ending decimals on those. So every time they use uh, LN, it's automatically a uh, E as the E base. base, there you go. Okay. All right, then last one of these was log base N of R equals a negative Y. So knowing that we start using letters, they're just being cute, just seeing if you got the idea. So I do know the base is the N. So I'm gonna write my N. I know the exponent is that negative Y. So I'm gonna write negative Y. And I know that's gonna equal that result of capital R. And remember, they use little letters, you use little letters in your answers or capital letters on them answers. They're really picky on those. Right, then they actually wanted you to play with the calculator. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a calculator to find the logs and 
and we're going to round four decimal places. So this would be log of 44. Now y'all think about this. I'm gonna expand your mind a little bit. This log doesn't have a number, so what number would be there? And that would be 10. Now think about this. 10 to the first power, so if you had 10 to the first power, that equal 10, right? If you had 10 squared, that would be 100. Y'all with me? This 44 is in between that 10 and that 100, which means my exponent has to be in between a one and a two. Are y'all with me? Just by deduction, right? 44, I know that result is in between a 10 and a 100. And if I play with exponents on tens, 10 to the first, 10, 10 squared, 100. So I know this answer will be in between those. But y'all, we got the calculator, so let's let it work. Now, we all have the log button, so I'm gonna hit the log, and then I'm putting in my 44 and enter. So let's go four decimal places. And that's why I use the curvy parentheses. That means you're approximating this to four decimal places. So we got a 1.643, let's see, after the four is a five, so I'm gonna make that a five and be done. All right, my 26, I can squeeze here real quick. Log of 345. Now watch what I was doing. 345 is bigger than 100. So the next power of 10, 10 to the third would be 1,000. 345 is in between 100 and 1,000. So that means my answer will be between two and three when we're done. So let's see, log 345 gives us What's that? 2.537. Uh, is that an eight or a zero? Looks like an eight, right? It's an eight. Okay. And then we're done with that. So they're just getting y'all good on estimating those. And if these numbers ain't perfect, um, squares and cubes and stuff. That's why you're getting all these decimals. And then you said the log is always going to, if they don't give you the base for it, it's always going to equal 10, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. How about a log of a negative 44? Hmm. So the smallest exponent I can put on a 10 would be a zero. That gives me one. 10 to the first equals 10. 10 squared equals 100. I'm having trouble finding exponents that'll turn that into a negative number, right? Because that negative 44 ain't in between none of my numbers. So y'all watch what happens when you punch in a negative 44. You hit enter you're going to get an error because it is a non-real answer. That means if you did logs of these, you would get imaginary answers, okay? So what we're going to put in that case, when we try to take a log of a negative number, we're going to put does not exist, or that could be what, a D and E. So you cannot take logs of negative numbers, okay? And see if you hit two and go to the error it's saying hey you're trying to take a log of these negative numbers and we just can't do that all right 28 what about a ln of 75 round that out four decimal places so we got the ln button on here so i'm gonna hit ln punch in 75 close parentheses and go 
So I get 4.317. It looks like a 4.8, so I'm gonna make that 4A5. Don't these ain't too bad, are they? LN of a negative 1.13. Well, if I can't take a log of a negative number, I'm pretty sure I can't take a ln of a negative number. So let's try. Here's the ln right up there by the 4, negative 1.13. Hit enter. And look at that. Non-real answer. So this does not exist. All right, then we're finishing out this first uh, 9.4. They want us to find the logarithms using the change of base formula. So I got a log base 4 of 50. So change of base is what I was showing you earlier, Jessica. Everybody else on this, you could use log base. Okay. I think I'm just going to go and upgrade my calculator. <laughs> okay, but this ain't bad. Watch log of 50 divided by log of 4. That's actually what they're just showing you in here that you could do that to find the logs when you don't have those updated calculators. So let's see, a log of 50, close parentheses, divided by log of four, close parentheses. And let's see, they want me to round these out four places. So I'm gonna go 2.8213. So y'all got about two or three doing that. And then at the end, we're going to graph f of x equals five to the x. And then f negative one of x equals log base five of x. Oh, who remembers what that f negative one means? And y'all did this on one of y'all's Oh, what was it? Second test. How about it's a inverse function, ain't it? Remember, y'all had to find the inverses. Y'all changed the um, f of x to a y. Then you switched to x and y's around. Then you solve for the new y. And then at the end, you replace the y with F negative one notation. So all we want you to do is be able to graph these. So I'm gonna clear that out. So we can all put in that log. I mean, that's five to the X. So five exponent X. Now I'm gonna arrow down to Y two. So Jessica, log X divided by log five until you get your new calculator. Other one, if we want to hit math and go down to log base. And then I got a five and my X. So they want you to just see that inverses when you graph them are sort of opposite of each other. See how this one crosses at zero, one and goes up. This one crosses at one zero when it's sort of little flatter going along. But these inverses don't cross each other. And see, they give you four pictures to look at. Well, that one, they definitely crossing. Uh, that one, I can't see, but the one line, so I don't know where they're doing. This one looks perfect like my line. And then this one, they're sort of coming up and crossing. So you just pick the one that looks like your graph and move on. All righty, so what we're about to do, don't need much calculators, okay? 
So 9.5, properties of logarithms. So I'm gonna get a start on this and we'll probably go down to about number, I'll finish probably the first eight of these. Now, since logarithms are exponents, they follow properties that are similar to exponents. So my first property is the product rule of logarithms. Ah. Product rule of logs. So the product rule says that the log of a product x times y can be written as a sum of the logs. So when you multiplied variables, you added those exponents. So that's what this is saying. Hey, you're multiplying. So we could be rewritten as a sum of those exponents. Second rule we call the power rule. of logs. So this one tells me if I got a log of a result raised to an exponent, I can rewrite that as a product of a times the log of x. So you did this when you had say x squared to the third power you multiplied those exponents. So they're saying, hey, since log of x is an exponent, we're multiplying that exponent times this exponent and writing it as a product. Next, y'all had a quotient rule for division. So when you was dividing something like x divided by y, well, when you divided variables, you subtract the exponent. So when you're dividing, you can rewrite them as a difference of the exponent. Always the top minus the log of the bottom. Now we've already sort of played with this one, um, but this is log base b of b raised to some exponent. Well, the first thing you would do would bring the a down using the power rule. So that would give you a times log base b of b. But remember, log base b of b equals one and a times one is just a. So that's sort of going back and looking at some of them problems we did earlier where the answers were just those exponents. All right, so knowing these properties, we're gonna just rewrite stuff using all these properties. So the first one wants me to express as a sum of logs. So if I'm doing the sum, it must be this first one, the product rule. So they're giving us a log base six, and then in parentheses, six times 36. Now they don't want us evaluating this at all. They just want us to rewrite it as a sum. So notice, all we did up here was distribute the log. All I'm gonna do is distribute that log six to both of those. So I get a log six of six plus a log six of 36. And then we're done. And I've accomplished the task of rewriting this as a sum. Now, each one of these, they're gonna do one log and one natural log. And y'all, this is the same thing, this distribute the natural log to both of those so that we get an ln of x plus 
at ln of y. So you really want to sort of practice these four little properties because that's all we're doing to these. Um, express as a product. So to express as a product, we're doing the power rule because that's the one that came out as two things being multiplied. So y'all, I get log base 10 of y to the 16th. So to, re to rewrite it as a product, all we're going to do is take that 16 and move it to the front so that we get 16 times log base 10 of y. Oh, that would have been number three, my bad. Number four is going to do the same thing with a ln. ln, uh-oh, fifth root of three. <clears throat> so remember, since you got a radical, your first move is to rewrite this radical. So we got ln, your base is three, Remember, the exponent is the exponent. Well, the three didn't have one, so it's going to be a one over the root, which is a five. So I got ln of three to the one fifth. So to write it as a product, I got to bring the one fifth to the front so that I get a one fifth ln three. Okay. So three and four, all you're really doing is bringing exponents to the front, except number four, you didn't know the exponent until you rewrote it out of that radical. All right, let's see, next we're gonna express as a difference. Of logs. So these would be five and six. So five, I got log base C of D divided by seven. All right, so distribute the log C to the top and the bottom. So we get a log C of D. And remember, since you're dividing, they will be subtracted. And then on bottom, I get what, a log base C of seven. Okay. Six, same thing, doing LNs. This is a LN of a V over W. So let's distribute the LN. So I get a LN of V minus LN of a W. All right, y'all, two more. So one of these not bad, one of them's a little wild. Rewrite as sums or differences of logs. Number seven had log base B of X to the third y to the eighth, and a z. So you got to figure out, are you going to write them as adding or subtraction? Well, since these are being multiplied, these will be written as sums. And I'm going to distribute that log b to all three of these, okay? So that'll give you a log base b of x to the third plus log base B of Y to the eighth plus log base B of Z. So first step I did, I had to rewrite as sums. Second thing I got to do, I got exponents sitting on top of these member. Since I got exponents, I got to use the power rule and bring my exponents down to the front. 
So that's going to give me three log b of x plus that'll give me a a log b of y. And then this one didn't have an exponent, so it's going to stay a log b of z. So right here we had to bring exponents to front of each term. Alrighty then, since there's nothing else I can do to any of these, we're done. So what you're doing on these problems now, when you rewrite the sums or differences, they're going and they're going to utilize all four of those properties, okay? So y'all got time for my last one here. So this one is a log base B of a P to the third Q to the seventh over M to the fifth B to the seventh. So let me write a little note on this. When rewriting If on top, then it is positive. If on bottom, then it is negative. Because the ones on bottom are using that quotient rule. And remember, they're being subtracted from the top. So when you rewrite them, if they're on top, they'll be positive, and if they're on bottom, they'll be negative. So here we go. We're going to do log base B of P to the third. So I'm just going to distribute the log B to everybody, plus a log B of Q to the seven. So these two were on top. They're positive. Everything else is on bottom, so they're going to be subtracted or negative. So on the bottom, you get a log B M to the fifth. And then it's going to be minus log B, B to the seventh. So y'all was just waiting for this section of math where you didn't really get to solve anything, but the problems get a little wild. All right. We've rewritten in the sums and differences, but now all these exponents got to go to the front. So that's going to give me a three log B of P plus a seven log B of Q minus five log B of M minus seven log B of B. All righty. So believe it or not, one more thing I can do to this. So let me go through and see. I can't do nothing here at all. Uh, I can't do nothing there. Five log B M. I cannot do nothing there. But y'all. It'd be the last one, right? Right. The last one I can do something with because I got a negative seven log B of B. But remember, at this form, it looked like that fourth property I gave y'all, right? When the base matches the result. The answer is always going to be the exponent. Mm -hmm. Because remember, log B of B here really equals one and one times negative seven, just going to make that a negative seven. So I get to rewrite all of this and make that a negative seven at the end. Well, we need to do that step when we're in my labs. Oh, yeah, it's going to want this final simplified answer. Okay. okay. But remember, at this point right here, when you had the log B, B of seven, at that point, you could have changed that to a seven and been done with it. Because that's what that fourth little property we did, remember? Let me bring that back. This fourth property said when you had a base matching the result with an exponent, your final answer was just that exponent. So what happened here, our final answer was just that exponent of a seven. So that'll get you up to number nine 
in 9.5. So next class, we're going to finish out 9.5 and start 9.6 on the equations. And the log equations are always fun because when you check answers, if you get a positive answer and a negative answer, remember, you can't take logs of negative numbers, so you can't accept answers when you're solving them that are negative and stuff. So we'll sort of see that when we uh, hit 9.6. So next class, we'll be doing some more of these, and they get really twisted in there a little bit, okay? I just want to stop this share, and I'll probably stop our video here.